I know I'm a little late to the party in this, but I wanted to give the game, or at least this update, a little bit of time to play through before I made any official statement. I know it's been a while since my last video, so Star Citizen 3.9, let's take a bit of a look. Now, I'm going to do this in kind of hyperspeed so that you can kind of see as much as possible while I'm kind of yapping at you here in the background. I started off at New Babbage, which is the new place on Microtech. Um, my first two spawn-ins were a little rough because I had 15 to 16 FPS. It was very choppy. There was lots of latency and things just didn't work very well. Then on my third attempt, where I was pretty much ready to give up for this update, I ended up on a server that had 40 FPS and it was a fantastic experience. So I was able to move around, interact with things and actually kind of enjoy what I was doing. So I thought, well, let's go test things out. Now, the city of New Babbage is not too difficult to find your way around. It's decently thought out. I love the look. I love the feel of it. But these trains and subways is the only way to get around on the surface. Seems a little messed up <laughs> because there's no real way to get around to the rest of the city. So they've built this city, but no actual infrastructure to get to anything, which just seems a little odd. And it's kind of similar on some of the others, but at least on uh, Hurston, there's some surface you can travel through. Now, in my testing, since we no longer can spawn at Port Olazar, they want, it's just kind of like a way, a way station out there to drop in and out of as needed, which means it served its purpose as a spawn point, but I prefer to go there simply because we've spent so long in the game at that sector that it's the easiest place for me to actually test things out because I know the area, I know the landscape, I know what's available, I kind of know what to do in that area. So it's my favorite favorite place to actually go run some tests. But first, we now have to get there. So I'm at the spaceport. The elevator buttons at this, at New Babbage, I think are the cleanest in the game. The rest of them are all kind of screwy and stupid. But even here, why can't you just put L1, L2, L3 like a regular elevator? Why do I have to scroll through pages of options in order to get to the right button? And if you're in a ship and you hit the inner thought button and then you start scrolling, it zooms out. So it's kind of counterintuitive. The spaceport itself is very nice, very cleanly laid out. It's not too difficult to get anywhere, but it does still have some issues with elevators. Now this was again my third attempt at playing the game. So my first ship got destroyed in lag out. I spawned a crappy ship because if I lose it, I don't want to worry about it. And moving it to a new location, I don't care if it gets stuck there. But you can see the ship's horizontal and my airport, my elevator moved horizontally and suddenly now I'm lower and off to the side. So just random, funky teleporting elevators. But I do love that you actually start in a decent hangar. I like that you still have to request clearance to take off now to open the doors and it creates a very nice presentation when you go to leave. Now it took me a moment because uh, this is the first time being in a Hornet in a long time and they actually started making all the buttons actually uh, correlate to some of the options so it took me a moment to figure out what's going on there. And the first time because my FPS was so bad I just tried to rush off the surface to get away from the weather effects and everything that was just chomping through my frame rate. This time, however, because my frame rate's good, I wanted to do a little bit of a flyby for New Babbage. Kind of enjoy the sights and see what's there. And flying with a mouse from third person is not as simple as it looks. I did not break out my controller. Now, if you saw the tram coming in there on the train tracks a moment ago, I'm a little annoyed that they didn't actually let me see the train. You can only really see the train you're on. Otherwise, it's just a dot of light moving through the track, which is dumb. That's like... Flight Simulator circa 1998 style cheapness on saving polygons and stuff. Oh, good bug there for my weapon payload bays to be open, but no matter. There is a surface area where you can get rovers and stuff out, and I will tinker with that eventually, but right now I just wanted to fly over the place and have a good look at it. I never got a good look at Hurston because my frame rate was so trash and the no-fly zone was so restrictive that I never got a chance to look at it. But as you can see, there's all these little train tracks to get to central areas, but then there's big areas that just aren't really touched or don't look like they have full communication or transportation. So it'll be interesting to see how this fully unfolds, if we're going to be restricted or if there's going to actually be a need to go to some of these other centers. Now, jumping ahead a little bit, I flew into a snowstorm. I love the effects on the cockpit. It does seem odd that I'm in such blustery area with a clear sky. Um, it doesn't get very high off the surface, this is just wind blasting everything around, which is fine, but it just seemed a little little funny. 
So I just wanted to land and see what the effects on the helmet are like. Good old bug here when I open the canopy. You'll see it here in just a second. Let's exit the ship. Okay, my HUD stayed in place even though the screens are gone. Well, that's nice. <laughs> ah, bugs. And I'm going to get out and go for a little jog and discover a very humorous glitch with the way the characters are kind of transposed onto the surface. So, a bit of third person first to have a look-see. Good distance restrictions, good effects. Like it. Get on the hill here. And, whoa, what's wrong with my ankles? <laughs> <laughs> my character has just complete it's like the legs and ankles are the only things reacting to the hill here the rest of my body makes no attempt at it which is just kind of funny so you can see the helmet kind of fogs up pretty quickly I like that effect I just wish there was a way of kind of cleaning that because if you're going to go on a planet on the surface you'd have a cloth you'd have a windscreen wiper you'd have de-icing you'd have anti-fog like rain -X, Some you'd have something on the helmet so I just I found that a little cheap but I loved the way it looked and the way it felt. Now flying out of the atmosphere on Microtech is just awesome. First we're going to pass like a Grand Theft Auto style annoyance which is coming up right here at the cloud layer. Bonk. Uh, two dimensional cloud layer. Annoying but I know it's temporary. Once we start heading up though if you start looking at the atmosphere you'll see the blue fade away and the black come in much faster and it is just awesome to see that happening. The transition from surface to atmosphere is just gorgeous. However, I hate that my atmospheric HUD is glossed onto my helmet and not centered and now broken, but shooting up into the atmosphere like this was just awesome. Being able to see the city that I just flew over fading away, giving a real sense of scale to the surface. Seeing the planet tech evolve like this was just awesome. Really enjoyed this and seeing the layers of the atmosphere, all of that, oh, just love it. This is the exploration and the fun of just cruising around that is what I look for in the game. Now one of the reasons that I haven't gone anywhere is now visible in front of me. There's a station that they put in orbit just above New Babbage which is really cool because you can quickly fly from surface to the station. A little harder to see when you're inside with a broken HUD, but Nonetheless, it's one of the newer design stations that just looks really cool. Unfortunately, when you get on the inside, it doesn't match the station layout at all. I really, really hope they fix that so that uh, you actually get in a station that matches what you just flew by. And this is where I'm going to encounter some glitches and annoyances with the flight system now. Because when you go into cruise mode, it just maxes your speed out. You can't set cruise mode at any specific speed unless you you unlock the controls to where it goes into more Newtonian style physics. You uncouple uh, terminology, sorry, brain fart. And I seem you just slide around a lot. And when you try to use the maneuvering thrusters to fully air brake you, quote unquote air brake, it just burns through your hydrogen fuel like crazy. So it's just, you're not going to get a lot done, especially if you're in a ship like this, where you're trying to do high maneuvering in combat, you're really going to be worthless fairly quickly. Just an annoyance. I hope they clean that up and, I would love to be able to set cruise control mode like SCM back in the old um, flight model from 2.3, 2.5, which was my favorite in the game. Hands down, the flight model and everything at that point was just so much better. But it's functional, you can make it work. Now this is real time sped up about 200% to actually fly across the entire area. It's about 8 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes in this particular ship. Which isn't too bad, all things considered. Larger ships, large drives, you should be able to move a little bit faster. I do feel that uh, upgrading some of these and, and tweaking them should be a little better. I also feel that the fuel that some of these ships are carrying should be slightly better to let you go a few places. Because if I'm entering a combat zone or I'm in a like a super hornet that's more of the heavy fighter to go out on patrol... I should be able to patrol an area. I shouldn't need to come in after five minutes. I should be able to zip around the whole system where my capital ship may be centered more towards the star and able to jump wherever it needs to. Now, I'm not saying that I need to be able to fly everywhere indefinitely. I should definitely need to refuel, but I should be able to planet hop at least here to two or three planets before I need to go refuel instead of having to do it every single jump because at this point, this ship's fully depleted of fuel now and I basically have to go top off before I can get anywhere 
which it's all right for this moment. It's just when I'm actually out playing the game, I don't want to stop for fuel every five minutes. It just doesn't make sense. Now I'm back at my good old friend Port Olazar. As you can tell, the flight's been pretty smooth. There's no hiccups, solid FPS. I was at a good 40 to 50 FPS for about 95% of this. A one or two dips when something major happened, but otherwise it was very smooth and stable, and I was very pleased with that. I know a lot of people have had a lot of issues with 3.9. Lots of server bugs, lots of disconnects, all sorts of problems. I personally have not really experienced a whole lot of that. I have had a couple 30k errors and a couple server login issues, but on the whole, my experience has been pretty good. And this, I think I've made about five flight attempts here, and it's just been really stable, so I'm very pleased with it. Now, this is the first time I've actually gotten to fly my Carrick. I tried in 3.8 and 3.81, but the game was so broken I couldn't do anything. You'll see that here in the next one because, well, we're going to jump ahead. Uh, this first video, I just wanted to show a bit of new Babbage. Give some basic thoughts of how certain things have gone. I love where the game's headed. I just really hope they stop screwing around and get on point. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week and we'll show a little bit about the mining and some other things that we've done in game. See how it goes. So thank you for watching.